So the question of the day is, can we fix the construction industry? I have a couple of ideas that just might work. Hi, my name is Chris Kalkal. Welcome to Construction Cronies. I can certainly testify to what the construction industry is really like, and I'm telling you, it's the pits. It is no secret that the construction industry is in trouble. One of the oldest industries and most important, one that brings in over $10 trillion a year in related goods and services, is in the dumps. And I'm going to tell you a little why and share with you my theory, a construction theory, as to how we can fix it. So you may be asking yourself, Chris, why is construction the pits? Why is it so bad? Well, for starters, while normal industry and major corporations have been spending the last few decades making the work environment safer and more comfortable for their employees, construction has been working in the opposite direction and has made it more uncomfortable and dangerous for us workers. You literally have to be an idiot to start in the trades these days. It is literally like serving a jail sentence. Trust me, I should know. As a parent of four beautiful babies and having a wife who has a real career, it is impossible for me to work for a construction company as an hourly employee because I could never get there on time. I may need sick days for myself and my children or I may have emergencies pop up during the day. And because of that, no one wants to keep me on board. I always get my work and the project complete. I do amazing work, don't we all? And I work as many hours as needed. But just because I can't be there during the specified hours, I'm unhirable. So I'm forced to work as a private contractor and peace worker. And trust me, that sucks. Even working in the office is not suitable for my situation. The only people who can fit in construction at the moment are those that have a stay at home spouse. And that's why the industry is hurting. Get with the times already and realize that in this day and age, both parents have to work or choose to work. What's happening now is the margins are so low, companies are pushing workers harder to produce and everything is rushed. Who cares about quality? Just get it done attitude and it's killing us. Literally killing us. Construction workers are dying at an alarming rate, more than previous years and before all that new safety legislation and company safety programs. The new safety legislation has put too much pressure on workers to be something that they're not, safety officers or safety inspectors. Instead of doing it the right way and hiring more inspectors, training more safety personnel, and force more inspections, they expect their workers to be both roles. You have the government bailing out the automobile industry, but construction workers have always been expendable. Did you know that companies used to budget for worker deaths and estimate how many would die per project? Worker safety and comfort is of low priority. They need to hire more inspectors and force more inspections. The high death rate and high injury rate is, is unacceptable. One in five worker deaths are in construction. 971 workers died in the USA in 2017. 70% of families are paying rates that the government considers unaffordable. Nearly half of families spend 15% or more of their household income on daycare. That's an average cost of almost $12,000 a year or $1,000 a month. The construction industry is short 200,000 workers as is. And as the boomers are all finally retired, the numbers are going to be catastrophic. For several years, the labor shortage has been one of the industry's biggest challenges. 80% of companies have been unable to find the workers they need, which has led to higher costs and longer timelines. One of the leading causes of the labor shortage is in, from 2008 and 2009, 2 million workers were laid off in construction, so workers adjusted their skill sets or retired, and few ever returned when the industry bounced back. Companies are adding $4,000 to each new home that they build to compensate for the labor shortage. That's a 4.5% increase in cost that has jumped 23.6% since 2004. You can literally take that money and pay daycare for three to four additional workers to be there. Think about that. Think about having four extra people on your site, on your project. How will that impact your timeline and cost? <laughs> Construction leads all industries in total worker deaths, and that number rises every year even 
with the reduced workforce. So the industry is clearly in shambles. It's clearly a disaster. So how do we fix it? What can we do to make it better? What can we do to get the workers that we need back into the industry? What we, can we do to make it safer for workers and more comfortable? So first of all, the hours of operation, seven in the morning to 3.15. I mean, come on guys, daycare doesn't even open till 7 a.m., right? How are you supposed to drop your kids off at daycare at 7 a.m. and be at, be at a job which could be across town at the same time? is absolutely impossible. So anybody who has to drive their kids to daycare is automatically off the list and cannot work in construction. <laughs> nah, 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 boo, boo. Let's talk about the unemployment rate. At 3.7%, that's 6.63 million people are unemployed. We only need 3% of them to work in construction. A huge percentage of those are stay-at-home parents because they can't afford the cost of childcare. We should be working eight to four. I mean, come on, get in line with the rest of the world. We need to be investing in daycare and childcare programs. Construction companies raise tons of money for charity, right? They, 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 one company raised $10 million for cystic fibrosis last year. You know, companies are always putting millions and millions of dollars into cancer research because they're the ones who cause that stuff, right? Like, come on. If we were to take the focus away and put it into child care, we would attract all the, all the workers we need, right? I mean, come on. It makes perfect sense. Why haven't you guys thought of this yet? Charitable contributions in the U.S. in 2017 were almost $375 billion. If you're going to hire 200,000 new workers into construction, chances are 40,000 of them are going to need daycare. If you were to take... $445 million, that would pay their daycare for a year. That's only 0.12% of all charitable con contributions raised each year. But yeah, no, construction companies put very little into support and mentorship, especially for women, but for new workers in general. They want you to make them a profit before they even consider investing anything in you. There's long, physically demanding hours, no overtime pay, no benefits, no sick days, or paid vacation. So with all this money flying around and we still can't see the problem that is right in front of us, or are they just choosing to ignore it? How long can this go on? One in five moms and dads ages 20 to 35 stay at home with their children and nearly half of them do it because they can't afford childcare. That's five and a half million people. Are you telling me out of five and a half million people, you couldn't attract 200,000 of them by paying their daycare and wages? I mean, even people who can not afford it and choose to stay at home would take that offer. This is interesting because the average age in construction is 42. So are we seeing people who used to be stay-at-home parents entering the industry later on because their lack in training and ease of getting work in construction? Uh, if we were to make daycare more affordable for parents and pay for training, we can get a higher quality workforce that lasts longer. We need 200,000 workers. Based on the national average, 40,000 of them would need daycare. That's four. $166 million a year. That's only 0.12% of all charitable contributions made in the USA each year. Make it safer. And I don't mean more legislation and put more responsibility on the workers. I mean, do it the right way and legislate more rules that force more responsibility on companies to have more qualified inspectors and spotters and force more inspections. So the three ways to fix it, make it an equal opportunity for all. If we can get more young people back and with the way it's changing with technology, it will once again be cool to work in the trades. Target more women and make it safer. Equal opportunity for all. There's 10.7 million workers in construction and with an estimated growth rate of 1.2%, when the national average is 10.2%, <laughs> It is said that construction will grow only 8.13% over the next 10 years compared to the national average of 24.6% over the next 10 years. Out of 10.7 million workers in construction, only 9.1% of them are women. Women make up 47% of the overall workforce in the country, but only 9.1% in construction? I mean, 
There's only 1.2 million women working in construction right now. That makes the industry short almost 3.3 million women to be even with other industries. When we only need 200,000 workers, right? You need 3.3 million women just to be even with the men, with the rest of the world. So just start targeting women, right? Just start targeting women. I don't know what is wrong with these guys, but the industry is stuck in the stone age. Come on, construction, wake the hell up and get on board with the rest of the world. I mean, come on. It's the pits. It is the shits to work for you guys. I'm telling you, as a worker, I've worked in the trades for 25 years. And it's and it's and it's literally hell working for you guys. The industry, you got low quality workers because anybody who's good doesn't want to work. Anyone who's smart definitely doesn't want to work in construction. It's a shit job. It used to be cool to work in construction. You used to make lots of money. Now you don't even make that, right? Like it's crazy. No sick days. As a, as a private contractor, peace worker myself, uh, even even most of the companies that you work for out here, because they're non-union, you get no sick days, no vacation pay. You know, you're, you're they're squeezing every penny out of you and putting all this pressure on you with all the legislation, all this due diligence bullshit and safety stuff when it should be the company's responsibility. But no, now it's the worker. The worker has to be a safety officer and a carpenter, a safety officer and an electrician. You know what I mean, right? Where I'm going with that. I mean, come on, construction. Get with the times. It's time for you guys to evolve, right? And it, simply, you guys just been stuck in the same rut for so long, you know? Get with the times, man. You got to change with everybody else, right? You're far behind. You're way far behind. And that's why owners are paying the price for the higher costs and the longer timelines. Anyways, enough rant for me. That was just a theory, a construction theory. And if you like the channel, subscribe right down below. And don't forget to hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss when I upload. This is Chris, everybody. Bye for now. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Bitch lasagna. Bitch lasagna. If you like this topic and are interested in other research that I've done, then subscribe to my channel. And you can always find my articles on LinkedIn.